across Wales, a spontaneous backpacking adventure. You know, I was uncomfortable with being comfortable, so I packed my gear and made a plan. I'm Liam, by the way. I wanted to experience nature and give myself a good physical challenge. This is how it would go then. I'd make my way through Snowdonia National Park, starting in the north and finishing further south. This would total a measly 96 miles, not enough if you ask me. So on the fly, I made a pretty rash decision. Try and make it to Cardiff, the capital of Wales. It would add an extra 120 miles onto the adventure. I had everything I needed in my pack. Food, water, shelter and clothing. I'd wild camp in the best spots I could find that night. If I needed to resupply, I'd pass through small villages along the way. I'd aim to walk 20 miles a day. No more, no less. This was about experiencing life in a simple way. It's time to grab yourself some popcorn, turn the lights off and put your feet up. I got the train to the north of Wales in the coastal town of Conway. This is where I'll be starting from. Whenever I think of Wales, I think of sheep, slate mines and castles. This is Conway Castle, built in 1283 and witness to a couple of battles over the years. It seemed a fitting place to start the adventure. I had a look around and to my surprise I walked past the smallest house in Great Britain, which was pretty cool. I'd be taking the coastal path on the first day before heading inland along the hills and valleys that Wales is famous for. Heading out of Conway, I made my way into the hills. The sheep were out in full force. You have to be a hardy animal to live on these hills. The weather was great for walking, ideal for getting some good miles in. On trips like this, you carry the bare minimum for basic human survival. Food, water, shelter and clothing. It's all you need. Along the way, I passed the 5,000 year old Neolithic stone circle. I love being reminded of Britain's past. It's pretty easy to forget nowadays. I'd venture through small villages with easy going gravel paths, a nice change from all the boggy hills. I started to get into a rhythm after a few hours. Walk for an hour, take a five minute break, then go again. Weather's good. You wouldn't realize it, but yesterday was the hottest day ever in the UK recorded. 40 degrees Celsius plus. And right now it's about 16 degrees, I'm freezing. It is so strange. But I'm looking forward to this one. Knowing all you have to do is walk that day is a brilliant feeling. The stresses of everyday life disappear almost instantly. I made my way past Aber Falls, a 120 foot waterfall. It would have made a great camping spot, but I still had some miles to go. Before I lost the sunlight, I started to look for a place to set up camp for the night, and I think I found the perfect spot. An old disused slate mine was ideal. That was a really good first day. Just managed to do about just over 20 miles, I think it was. I've decided on this trip, rather than 
just all out you know just head down keep going i'm gonna take my time just relax take in the view and just enjoy it so they're just over 20 miles started at nine it's about 6 p.m right now so yeah good few hours just walking really nice good going weather was good so set all my stuff up that's what i got for a meal got some couscous olive oil sausage and then a garlic clove there and then just some of them electrolyte tablets so yeah feeling really good gonna eat that and then just get a nice early night I woke up fully rested, headed down into the town and got myself a coffee. I was following the Snowdonia Slate Trail and some of the views were spectacular. This is where I'd start to head inland, through the heart of Snowdonia National Park. You know, it does make me grateful just being outdoors in nature like this. I love just watching birds, animals, little insects go by with their daily lives. That's what puts a smile on your face, not the material things and all that. Now look at this. What a place. I love just being grateful for no rain right now. Getting the fresh air, smiling, saying hello to people when you pass them. Admittedly, the coffee, the caffeine helps for an hour. <laughs> That's why I'm probably in a good mood, but I'd rather this any day of the week than the, the mundane stresses of everyday life. Ugh. It makes me so grateful just doing this. It does remind me, you know, once you get back into this rhythm of you walk, you eat, you sleep, repeat. It just boils everything down and it makes you appreciate the simple things. And lately I've been getting away from it, I don't know. Maybe, I, I love, look, I love hot showers and all that, but it's important to remind yourself, isn't it? Look at them hills. Yeah, just had a little bit of a moment, just weight off my shoulders. Don't know what it was, but not been feeling as good lately, maybe. I don't know. Just need to do this. Look, if it was raining right now, it'd be a totally different thing. I'd be like, oh, this is awful. Get me inside. But right now, I'm doing all right. That was one of the most picturesque valleys I'd ever seen. After hopping many gates, fences, and crossing small stream bridges, I decided to take a break. The Royal Air Force were doing some flyovers, so I managed to watch them in action. Pretty sure I've just come from that valley down there. We just came up and over. And we're going this way to Snowdonia National Park now.
forest was a welcome change of scenery from all the Expos hills. Later that day, I passed through a small village and got myself a drink. A pint of cold, fresh milk always does the trick. The ruins of another castle was close by. This one wasn't as fortunate as Conway. It was in ruins. I got my first glimpse of Snowdon, the highest mountain in Wales at 1,085 metres. Heading back up to the hills and hopefully I can find a spot for the night somewhere up there. I couldn't turn down the opportunity to camp with a view of Snowdon. It was unreal. Taking your shoes off after a 20 mile day is, well, you can't really explain that feeling. Breakfast was chocolate oats, decent fuel for what lied ahead that day. The terrain was great in summer. I can only imagine how it would be in winter. I'd be waist high in bog. This place was beautiful. I could not believe it. After some road walking, I found my favorite place, a cafe. Got myself a coffee. Ha. <laughs> First of the day. It's about 11 a.m. right now. I think it's day three. Just passed around Snowden. I was debating whether to climb it, but I was like, no. No, I'll be screwed by the end of today if I did that. So I'm just going to keep going on. I think it's going to rain now. It's starting to spit just slightly. And we're heading into that, all them clouds. And it should be fun. But it's, uh, it's really warm. So I don't really want to put any waterproofs on because I'll just sweat. And it's one of them where you, you get wet from the rain or wet from sweat. My eyes didn't deceive me. The heavens started to open. It started to rain and it's cooled everything down. Oh, way better. I mean, these views are insane. It's literally dropped about, I don't know, five, eight degrees maybe. I'm looking for a fish and chip shop. I'm dying for some. I haven't seen any along the way yet. Now's the perfect time. I'm, I'm ready for a big, Big meal. I was in luck, a town was close by. I sampled a Welsh pasty, which was great. Followed an old train line. 
and witnessed some of the clearest water I'd ever seen. There was a lot of hills and some road walking. Sometimes I prefer the road walking. I could get my head down and make up the miles. I needed a wash and stumbled upon a lake. It was a no-brainer to camp here for the night. A bathe in the lake after a hot day is always satisfying. It was paradise, and I emphasise, was. I woke up to pouring down rain. Waterproofs were a must. Let's give rain all day today. It's a wet one. Wet socks has to be the worst feeling in the world, especially when there's 20 miles more to walk that day. The route has taken me through this. There's no path. <laughs> He's got to tread through all of this. There could be a hole. I fall down it, nobody knows. <laughs> it's a nightmare. And I'm soaking wet. Stick to the path. There was a village close by, so I made my way towards it. I got myself a cheap room in a hotel, dried my stuff out and charged my power bank. I looked towards the hills that next morning, and more of the same it seemed. Just set off, day five is. Got myself a tea for the first time ever. Didn't have any coffee. I went into this local shop. <laughs> it wasn't even open, well, it should have opened at 10. It was like half nine. This old man was inside it and he said, yeah, come here, mate. So give me a tea on the house, which was nice of him. It's a Dalmatian horse. A forestry track was ideal to get out of the elements. If you could taste this coffee right now, best coffee of the trip. Just a, on a random busy road with cars going past and you get this amazing coffee. Oh, it's the best. One sec. Oh, it's amazing. Proper Americano, not like the British coffee you get. So I'm heading up into the hills now. When you're on the hills in bad weather, you feel slightly humbled. It can take an ego away within seconds. It was like I was in a tropical rainforest. This place had a weather system all of its own. You know it's wet when your shoes start to foam. It's 
still exposed. No trees or anything for about six miles. Just hills and road. I'm doing it up. I love it. I live for this. <laughs> and there's a tree line. Just there. I oh, was so lucky then first. Three days. Wow. Great weather. <laughs> and this is this is Wales. I'm gonna head over there. Hopefully you can see tree line. I'm going to try getting there and set up camp for the night. The rain was torrential that night. I was very glad to be dry and warm inside my tent. There was some easy walking for parts of that morning. The end of Snowdonia Way was in sight, and headed to the town of Machenclef. I got myself some well-earned fish and chips, did some laundry, and this was supposed to be the end of the trip. Instead, I made my way over to the coastal town of Aberystwyth. I sat in the Morrison's Cafe, and I got an idea. I've gone and got myself a bike, <laughs> a mountain bike. I was toying with the idea. The plan was to do Snowdonia Way, about 96 miles from the north in Conway to the south of Snowdonia National Park, and I've just done it. Made my way over to Aberystwyth, which is a coastal town, and there was a Holfords, and I didn't know whether to pack it in there or keep going. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go to Cardiff. I've heard about the cycle routes through Wales that lead to Cardiff. And I got myself this bad boy. Let me show you it. Went into the store, asked for the cheapest bike. And this is what the guy on the till said. So I got myself a couple extra puncture repair kits. And yeah, pretty much good to go. Following the cycle route. Enough talking, I'm too excited. Let me get on this bike. Let's head to Cardiff. <sighs> what a way this is to get around. It's got valleys left and right. <sighs> it's great. I think I've covered like 10 miles in not even an hour. Something stupid like that. <laughs> I'm gonna try and find myself a place to camp. Hopefully just tuck in, in between some trees and have some rest. Hopefully get 60, 60 miles in tomorrow, something like that. Should be fun. I think I found a spot. So jump this fence down, can you see there? I think that is camp. Coast is clear. Try not to put the tires. Let's go. All right, you go there. I love sleeping next to the water. I think it's just human nature, something deep inside all of us. Okay. Have I missed the route? I don't think I have. Yep, it is that way.
we have a bit of a problem. I was just cycling along <laughs> and I felt the pedal just wobble. And I think, so I've just took it, I've put it in my pack, but the bolt has just come loose and I haven't got a tool to tighten it, which I thought I've got a puncture repair kit and usually they give you tools, but this doesn't have one. So that is an L. I'm gonna have to take this to the nearest bike shop, wherever that is, could be about 20 miles away and get it fixed. So yeah, looks like I'm pushing this. I was gutted. This meant the adventure was over. I followed the roads to try to get my bike repaired. The gods seem to be on my side though. I think she wondered how it come loose though, after <laughs> one day. <laughs> yeah, pretty crap. I don't think it was done up right. Yeah. Because it's ripped the end of the thread out of this. Oh, strange, isn't it? Wow, I can't believe it. Quite literally, a mile down the road, there was a campsite. I went into it and there was this builder working on a farmhouse. He had lots of tools around, so I asked him, have you got a socket set? And he was like, oh, let me do it for you, mate. You are a legend, mate, if you're watching this. Thank you. Just goes to show, if you ask, you'll get it. So, as you can see, pedal's back on, and he's really just saved this whole trip. I'm gonna just keep going, hopefully make it to a town called Raider, I think it's called. Stock up, and maybe get a coffee. I'm over the moon with that. All right, let's keep going. I was having so much fun. It was like wow. being a kid again. <laughs> this is crazy. Well, that was funny. <laughs> Just this guy pulled up next to me. Up there he was on like a motorbike he's like do i watch you on youtube i was like i don't know mate do you so and apparently he does that was weird like in the middle of absolutely nowhere so uh he said where are you heading i said this way he said once you get over, over the hills it's downhill from there until the next kind of town man i'm literally low on water really low roads are an absolute dream. That valley was something else. Wow. <laughs> that guy was right. As soon as I got over them hills, it just comes straight down. That was brilliant. I eventually found some water in a public toilet. Not something you say every day. I made sure to filter it. <laughs> Got some nut butter as well. Really good stuff that. <sighs> Gonna have a rest and then I think we're about seven miles away, I think it said. Uh, I'm gonna pick out, I might get a beer. If if shops are still open, I might get myself a nice cold one. I could do with another fish and chips. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just fantasizing right now but yeah I've enjoyed it I'm tired but I've really enjoyed it so far nice bench nope keep going the downhills was something else now I realise why so many people enjoy cycling. Yes. Civilization. <laughs> A town could only mean one thing. Fast food. Singapore fried rice. Some chips. And a coke. Sitting next to a road. <laughs> I cannot wait to eat all this. I sat at the bench with my fried rice and I felt really good about myself. Now time to find a place to camp tonight. Cyclist dismount. 
beautiful. Why am I st <gasps> Why am I stopping on a bridge? Get off it. Load of sheep. Look at its weather now. So good. It was pouring down. It looks so dry. Ancient coach road ahead. Scenic but rough and muddy when wet. We'll keep climbing. <sighs> The bear I saved in my pack was well needed that night. Legs are aching this morning, I'll tell you that. So I just camped down here last night, just in a next to a farmer's field, next to the river. Why I think it is. That's the next town we're heading to. Pretty sure that town down there is called Wilf Wells. <sighs> Another couple of miles, maybe. Uh, yes. I'm leaving Wilf Wells behind. It's a nice little town, that. I stopped at a cafe, got myself a coffee chilled out for a bit, looked at my maps, and now, fingers crossed, the elevation profile said half the next 80 miles, that's how long we've got until Cardiff. The next about, I don't know, 20 to 30 is relatively flat. Fingers crossed. Hopefully I'm going to enjoy this, but it goes uphill and then you go down towards Cardiff, so yeah. Weather's really nice. I'm sunburnt a little bit, my lips are a bit chapped. But I'm feeling good. Uh, supplies were all right. Uh, I go through little towns and villages now anyway, so yeah. Let's go. The cycle routes were so easy to follow. A blue sign with a red number. It was good to see the old-fashioned red telephone boxes still in use. This is creepy. Look how the trees have grown just like that. <laughs> Little chick. <laughs> Look how small that is. Oh, what the... It can fly. Hello mate, look how small that is. Where is he? Or her. <laughs> oh, I was gonna pick it up and just hold it. This looks like the chocolate river from <laughs> Willy Wonka. It's just so brown and <laughs> chocolatey. I wanna drink it, but Probably get poisoned. <laughs> this is amazing, this cycle path. Oh, I would love this all the way, but sadly it ends. I'm gonna go uphill. What is that? <laughs> I thought that was graffiti. I thought someone had spray painted. That's beware frogs about. <laughs> what is this? I've never seen that anywhere in the UK. I started to feel feral. So I booked myself into a campsite and got a hot shower. You know you've done well that day when you don't remember falling asleep. I was up bright and early for what would be the last day. I'd sometimes walk with the bike to stretch my legs. I couldn't believe it. It was like being in slow motion. The great thing about covering so much distance was that you could always grab a bite to eat in town. 
rather than carry that food in your pack. The first sign for Cardiff appeared. I was on the final stretch of the adventure and I got a new burst of energy. It's probably from the fast food to be honest. For the past half an hour, I've just been in heaven. This path, it's just straight out of the, the last town I was in. I got something to eat and a coffee. And I didn't want to jinx it. I didn't want to record it because it might stop, but it just keeps going and going. Just a flat cycle path all the way to Cardiff. Fingers crossed. It's amazing. The miles just kept tumbling. I was on the outskirts of the capital of Wales. Cardiff was in sight, quite literally. I followed the cycle path and I got into the city centre, worlds away from the hills of Snowdonia National Park that I'd just previously experienced. <laughs> 